just kind of thrown into the fire and just going to kind of go for it, right? So I had kind of presented in my old job. I was running virtualization for, uh, you guys know, Viacom, so like MTV and Nickelodeon and those guys. I was running VMware there. So like I did a lot of presentations up to like my manager and that kind of thing, but I had never really gone in front of a crowd. So I got invited to, uh, I think it was Pure Storage, I got invited to their sales kickoff. And they're like, oh, we're just gonna have you present in front of a few people. Their sales team happened to be like a thousand people. So I got up on stage and I kind of like looked out and it was just a sea of just heads and I, like, I didn't know what to do, right? Luckily, I had joined VMUG a little earlier and I'd volunteered to do some presentations here and there just on stuff that I knew, right? And that, that's the thing. With VMUG, you can kind of pick what you want to present on. So you could say, you know what? I've been working on this thing Zerto, for example, right, just because we're here. Let's say you implemented Zerto, you know that they're gonna be a sponsor. You can just raise your hand and say, hey guys, I'd like to present that. You know, I went through this experience, this was my use case, I migrated you know, a whole bunch of VMs from one data center to another, and let me share my story. And I'll tell you what, leaders love that stuff. I mean, Mike, as a leader, would you, how hard is it for you to find people to get up on stage and present? Is it? Very hard. Yeah, so it's, a, it's an opportunity, and what I like to say is, when you're presenting in that kind of setting, it's friends, right? You, you don't have to worry about the judgment and things like that. And you know, we'll talk a little bit about like yeah. imposter syndrome and all that. But realistically, you have knowledge to share. So you know, get up and share it in the best possible setting just to get the reps in. You know, if any of you've done obviously your jobs or any kind of sports or anything like that, you gotta practice, right? And that's all this is. The more you can practice and get up on stage, the easier this is gonna become. I see you smiling, because you get up and present a lot, Mr. Uh, John White in the back. So, a lot of practice, a lot of reps, and kind of helps you along the way. That's it, there you go, see? So, we mentioned other virtualization groups. Uh, VTUG, which started out in the Boston area, uh, that, that was the virtualization technology user group, and I am I'm very fond of them, because they make an event in, uh, in Patriot Stadium every February around yeah. playoff time, so I'm always there. Um, it's in, and I'll, I'll say, so I'm a Giants fan, so I could, you know, I don't care about those guys. We, we beat them. But uh, at the end of the day, like, it's usually during the playoffs, and New England's usually in the playoffs, so it's kind of cool to be able to, like, walk around the stadium and everything like that. But what I like about VTUG is it's virtualization technology. It's not VMware, so it's actually spread open. So you've got Nutanix, and you've got AWS, and you've got people talking Python, and you, there's just such a vast array of the technology that you're, you're gonna see, so you might get exposed to something that maybe you've never worked with before and be able to say, oh, you know what, that's kinda cool, maybe I'll go play with that. And then, you know, meet the person who's presenting and have a conversation, hey, how'd you get started? And they can give you a little bit of background and, and kinda get you rolling as far as what their journey was and, and how they got rolling with that. And, and we included the Azure and AWS groups because we've seen a lot of the people that used to be very hard into VMware that maybe their job role or, or their interest takes them to something else. Yep. Some of those guys are, are Kubernetes experts today. So that D community gets to expand, and you get to see that this same person that was talking about a topic two years ago is an expert now on another thing. And that helps you also, like, when you need to learn that, hey, I know somebody already that is onto that. Yep. So they know where I'm coming from, that my perspective, and I can also get what they tell me, hey, this is quite different than what you've learned before. Exactly. Mm -hmm. And like, whatever you want to learn, right? So, like, I've been playing around with Docker at home and things like that, so there's a Docker user group that I'm, I'm going to probably check out at some point. But, like, realistically, every technology has their own user group. You could learn about whatever it is just by finding a bunch of people that are already doing it. If you guys have ever seen like the Meetup app, you know, on your phone, it's a great way to just kind of type in a couple words, like Linux or whatever, it'll tell you all the groups that are available and, and help you get started, okay? So, these are kind of our personal tips. Now, I'll just kind of hopefully, uh, marketing's well, the, not the listening too hard about, about the sessions. Who has gone to VMworld? Yeah. Cool. The first time I went to VMworld, I was all about filling my calendar with sessions. 100%. Who else did that? Okay. Have you been to your second or third VMworld and realized that that was a mistake? Yeah. Really, what you want to be doing there is, sure, there's some sessions where, where you want to get a lot of information. You may know it's not recorded. You might want to talk to the speaker afterwards. Uh, it might be super pertinent to the job. But most of the things you want to be doing at a big conference, you know, don't tell your boss that you're going to be just going there yeah. to basically talk and meet people. Yep. Uh, you can get so much more. Like reading blogs is great and, and podcasts is great, but you can get so much more from one-to-one -one conversation with a, with a person that has the knowledge that you want. So, so that's what you want to do all day. Yeah, my favorite space is the hang space, right? So it's, it's really, 
beanbag chairs and big screens where they're actually playing like keynotes and things like that. And, yeah. and if you ever go to the keynote, watch it from the hang space, not from the actual stadiums. Yeah. A lot, a lot easier. Seating. Yeah, seriously. Um, but also, there's a community stage there. I don't know if you guys know Alistair. He uh, helps run V Brown Bag, which we're going to talk about here in a moment. There's people getting on stage, and these are more community-driven presentations too. And I think you're actually asking for content right now, right? So, so yeah. if you're looking for a chance to present at VMworld, now's a chance. We'll, and we'll just find me outside, and I'll, I'll get you all squared away on that. But being able to go and hear people present about topics that they're passionate about is is awesome because when people are talking about something they love it just flows naturally you know you don't you don't hear a lot of buts and ums and things like that mm -hmm. it's just they're they can't get the content out of their mouth fast enough because they love it and to learn from somebody like that is i think a lot easier than trying to learn yourself by reading a blog or you know watching a video or something even like if that. you're not sure what you want to learn just hanging out in that space and having that no that noise in the back you just know when it's a good talk when everybody in the blogger table starts looking at the, at the yeah, presenter, right? Exactly. So it's always it was always a good barometer of where technology is going. Yep. So you know we talk about Twitter a lot. This is kind of the, the Twitter unofficial uh, guru right here. I mean, uh, or you're official, right? Yeah. So yeah. if you guys are on Twitter, I don't know if you search a lot of hashtags and things like that. But if you ever want to see what's going on in an event, open up Twitter and just put in hashtag ZertoCon, right? You'll see every post that's related to Zerto, especially you know like whenever I'm tweeting or Ariel's tweeting. We're going to put in a hashtag just to kind of keep our content focused. And if I want to revert back to something, I'll have that ability and know where to go. Same thing with really every con. VMworld, they have a hashtag. And you can also go back and see past content. So it's a great way to search any kind of data or any kind of information that you would like to find. Um, you know, if you on ever topic. find yourself at a point where, OK, it's 4 PM. I don't know what I'm going to do next. Open up Twitter and just look at the hashtag. It's a great day. Oh, everybody's going there. Okay. Yeah. I mean, honestly, parties and things like that, like, you know, we're going to be tweeting. If you, you don't know where people are at and you want to find out, just, you know, go just be a fly on the wall and, and we'll kind of talk about how that, that evolution happens here in a minute as well. So we mentioned B Brown Bag. Uh, I'm also part of B Brown Bag and I started with the Spanish part of it, Spanish speaking. Uh, we have Spanish speaking US time zone, EMEA time zone. Has anybody time actually zone. used B Brown Bag in the past here? Uh, you guys know what it is or consume the data? Okay. So. They put us in the in the in the slot of podcasting, but it's really video casting. What B Brambag is about is about finding somebody that wants to teach others. That's it. There's nothing else to it. Uh, so we every Wednesday, I think the most the most uh, consistent channel is a U.S. channel. Every Wednesday at 8:30 Central, Eastern. Eastern. Uh, we have somebody presenting on a topic that they want to present about. And since B Brambag is its own thing, we present about anything. Uh, right now, we're doing an Azure deep dive. Uh, we're going to start with HashiConf uh, tools in a little bit. Mm -hmm. So we're always looking at who is, whatever's hot, whatever's a thing that people want to learn about, we're going to have it featured on B Brown Bag. You want to get certified? There's a VCAP yep. series, there's a VCP series, there's an AWS series. And, and this is all yeah. volunteer. So we, yeah. we'll come out and say, hey, a new certification is out. People want to do it. Uh, anybody want to present topic one, topic two, topic three? And we'll typically get really good presenters. And uh, it will be available in YouTube. So you can find B Brown Bag on YouTube right now. Uh, the other part of B Brown Bag, I, I would actually like Alistair to explain about Tech Talk. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, so I'm Alistair Cook. And uh, I, I speak funny because I come from New Zealand. And in New Zealand, I actually have an English accent. But uh, oh. everywhere else, I have a New Zealand accent. Uh, and I run the business behind B Brown Bag. Uh, this is a really weird thing to do as a community person to actually start running a business. I, I have a day job as well, uh, teaching AWS training courses, but running the, the business of the Brown Bank is, is um, kind of the dream come true of making community my job. So at VMworld, we got given this stage. Uh, back in 2011 was the first time we did this. We did a call for papers and said, we really want to hear from the interesting people in the community. Uh, the main sessions at VMworld are sponsors talking about their product or VMware staff talking about their product, and they're aimed at the beginner. Uh, we want to hear the deep dive stuff. And, and also, and sorry to interrupt, but we get so many people submitting requests, uh, sessions for VMworld, and 10% get accepted. So we, B Brownback was like, no, we, we want to take advantage of the 90% that are being uh, denied. We have a stage for you. Yep. And they don't have to be 
hour-long talks. And then, you know, so th that was one of the key things for us. We wanted uh, participation. It's one of the, the key elements for us is there's a very low barrier to entry for being part of the brown bag to producing content to helping other people. So we do 12-minute long presentations typically. And we stack four of them in an hour and we do them the whole time that the hang space is open. So I've got the call for papers out open at the moment. I'm expecting to get somewhere between 150 and 200 session submissions. That's what we've got the last couple of years. And then I get to schedule about 120 of those. Um, so mostly it's one presenter gets one session because I want as many people to come and present as possible. It's a great on-ramp to speaking at events is just turn up, uh, present in front of a group of friends. It's a smaller group typically than we have in the audience now. Although, now that we're in content catalog, catalog and schedule builder, uh, which looks great on your resume, right? I've been listed a, as a speaker at a conference already and it's really easy to get in. Um, now that we're in content catalog, we've had standing room only because somebody's presented a really interesting topic that they described well. And so we had seating for 45 and we had 150 people. Uh, so yeah. it's, it's a really easy place to get into. It's uh, really interesting content typically, very much focused on what's the hands-on practical experience. It's all very well that it worked nicely in the vendor lab that was carefully crafted and made to work mm. beautifully for the presentation in the keynote. Uh, it's also about the marketing fluff too. It's, it's right, right to the point. This is from the engineer. This is what he did. This is the problem he solved, how he solved it, et cetera. And that's very much the core of what V Brown Bag is about. It's hands-on practitioners teaching one another how to be better at that hands-on yep. practitioner thing. The other series we're doing at the moment is Learn to Code in Python. Yeah. Um, mm. One of the guys actually from, from up uh, in, in Hampshire. New Hampshire. Yeah. Um, the unstoppable uh, Miss Dwyer, <laughs> Chris Williams. He, he had a chat with me at reInvent last year and said, you know, I, I feel that I'm behind because I don't know how to code. Um, and I think it's time we, I learned to, to, um, to code in Python. And uh, I'd like to share that, share that process of learning with a community group and get a bunch of people to help teach me how to code. This is, this is the code. Can I have permission to do that? Yeah. Uh, and Ariel knows that, that V Brown Bag runs on a uh, forgiveness <laughs> if you've got a good idea and want to teach something, then we've got a place for you to do that. And uh, my job as, as the person who runs the business behind is to take the barriers away from that. So I'm kind of more like a project manager um, saying, well, what do you need in order to be successful? How can I get that to you? Yeah. Uh, but the call to action, uh, two, two pieces of call to action for this. So one is if you're going to be at VMworld, propose a tech talk with V Brown Bag. One of the things I've consistently seen is that all, all of these user groups, whenever I sit down and have a chat with people, there is always a story that would be better with a larger audience. Um, so the first call to action is, is come present that story for us. Uh, the second call to action is very few of you seem to know V Brown Bag. Go find V Brown Bag. A uh, huge amount of resources that will help you improve your career that are all free to consume. It's a really important part of what we do is produce engineer to engineer content that is free to consume. Thank you. Thank you. Awesome. Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. So uh, how many of you guys and gals have a commute? Sitting on a train or driving or, you know, got an hour to kill. Do you know there's a bunch of tech podcasts available that you can learn about stuff as you're driving, you know? So one, one of the things that I miss about living in New York City was that every time I wanted to meet this guys for a beer, I had 45 minutes of train time, and that's typically how long a podcast would take. Uh, I started with you know audiobooks and stuff like that, but podcasts are so just consumable, and there's some really quality ones in the V community out there. Uh, so V Gigacast, uh, I think, it just won the, la the best podcast this year in uh, Eric Siebert's ranking. I mm. think Eric's around here. There he is. Yep. And uh, virtually speaking, I think I actually think it was virtually speaking that won number one and, and yeah. V Gigacast number two. But these are really like up-to-date stuff. Uh, there's some of them are run by VMware employees or employees by another company. Some of them are just community. Some of them yeah. are just people like you and me sitting down and talking about what they've seen has happened in the last few year, uh, days. Live or from VMworld. Here's what I saw. This is what I heard yeah. in the keynote. What I think about it. You know. Mm -hmm. Or if there's someone interesting that they want to talk to more, they bring them on as a guest. So it's not so much of a, a session, but it's more of a conversation about other things. Uh, they just have an excellent episode on. Um, dealing with depression and burnout, yep. which is a, a topic that has come out in our, in our community in the last few years. They have been unearthed uh, from, from the relative obscurity to bring, being brought into the forefront and basically allowing people to help each other and, and to reach out to each other. So it's almost something, it's also therapeutic. And it, it's, it's a great uh, way to get to know people, really. 
uh, some other podcasts that are very famous, Data Nuts and Packet Pushers, especially if you have networking people, your networking admin, if you're not a network admin and you, ha you work with one, they probably would benefit a lot from that podcast, Packet Pushers. It's very, very good. And if you w just want like overall career, career advice, this podcast already finished, but it's phenomenal. It's my favorite. Yeah. It's called Geek Whisperer. You can still find it and play it. Yeah. Uh, this is your world. I'm not even sure. <laughs> so one of the things that, that I find a lot is that I go somewhere, people are nice, everything's great, nobody knows who they are. And it's just that people aren't taking advantage of the internet. If you are nice in your job and in your church and your community and stuff, great. But if you would just had a Twitter account and if, it, if you would just like blog every once in a while, we will find out more about you and you could amplify what you're doing. Uh, the internet is mostly in English. So you have already an advantage that you speak the, the, the language very, very well. You can have a worldwide reach if you just make a blog. So I recently moved from uh, New York City down to Charlotte. And I had a lot of friends that I, I had made in New York and, you know, moving away. I don't know if I'll be able to keep in touch with them. But every once in a while, I can just get a mention. Hey, Nick, you know, wish you were here. That's great. And just start a conversation real quick. And even with Ariel, Ariel's been moving around like seven times in <laughs> three months. Right? So being able to stay in touch and say, hey, we're doing something in Nashville. Can you make it out? And yeah, sure, great. Or we're going to all be at VMworld at the same time, let's get together. You can just create a group of you know, your closest friends or people that you work with on specific projects or whatever it may be and get everybody together. And I just like the, you know, once again, the, the brotherhood, the community, like that's all something that's been important to me for you know, basically my whole adult life. So this is really something that, it's just another way to take it and extend it and really grow your, your, your family and your network and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, cool. And a note about hashtags is that there's certain hashtags that are meant for a certain group. Like if you're a VCDX certified guy, you probably will post every time with a VCDX. But the community is a catch all. If you just wanna be part of the community and you just wanna ask a question, promote your blog post, anything, you can just hashtag it the community. Yep. So it's feel free to use it. So how can you get started? Yeah, how to get started, how can you contribute? Uh, we already mentioned like making an online presence. That would be the first part. If you're a guy that when somebody wants to take a selfie, you're like, oh no, I don't wanna be on the internet. Yeah, get over it. Like, we're, we're, gonna, we're gonna be on the internet. This face, only my mother and my wife likes it. I'll just move three feet in front of you and just kind of yeah, do yeah, it's, and, you, know. you know, you are who you are. <laughs> just don't, don't be afraid to understand that your identity online can also be very positive. It doesn't have to be just faces, for example. You can actually have a professional part of you um, because most of, most of the time we use Twitter professionally. Correct. It's, I'm, I'm not putting there a lot of my personal stuff, although I, I probably do. Unless I'm com you know, complaining about Game of Thrones or something like that. Yeah, so yeah, that, that you can't avoid that. Yeah. But uh, I made my Twitter to be mainly my virtualization community yep. in, uh, interest. I have friends that have very political Twitters that they keep them separate. So Muting is great. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> you can be the <laughs> nicest guy, but if we don't agree on something, yeah, we're not gonna be friends yeah, and that's yeah, fine, exactly. right? So, so don't be afraid to have that online presence to start your digital brand. Um, and uh, we also mentioned something that the OG, you know, the old way of doing things with the forums, and they're still very active, especially if you're deploying MSX, probably the VMTM forums on MSX are the most active that you'll find. Um, we're gonna get a little more into the expert program itself, yeah. but I just want you to understand that if you develop that uh, online presence thing, it's gonna be like a muscle. The first times you're gonna be like, I don't know why I'm doing this, my blog is terrible, you know? But within two years, just people are gonna reach out and tell you, hey, you know, you can change this and it will look much better. You know, or, you know, add a picture here and that way I know who you are when, when I go into a conference. So all these things, those little tweaks do carry out with time. Um, I, I have no business being invited to Certicon, but this guy <laughs> knew me, this relationship worked out and he was like, I want you to help me with this. And so he paid for my hotel and my, and my Certicon. Come on, man. <laughs> But th my point is, I only got in the community four years ago, yeah. and I really haven't done anything special apart from being part of the Brown Bag and trying to help people. And it turns out that if you're positive, positive things happen. Yeah, I, I think the other thing to note is, you know, you, you mentioned personal brand, right? And that's something that kind of gets overlooked as far as career growth and things like that, where everybody's trying to build their own brand even if you don't realize it. You know, you want to make yourself the most presentable so that you can get a better job, get paid more, things like that, right? 
This community is very small. Even if it seems huge, I run into people that I knew five jobs ago, you know, in different cities at conferences all the time. And the more that you maintain these relationships over time, it's only gonna help you. Whether it's getting a new job, whether it's, you know, I wanna learn something new. Oh, hey, my buddy just did a, a presentation on that. You know, you'll have that ability to grow not only personally, but professionally as your presence grows. And one thing we wanted to highlight up there is Git. So as people are, trend, you know, they're transforming more into not just a system administrator, but also a system administrator who can code, uh, sharing that code actually is very, very useful and appreciated. How many times did we not search in Google for something that, oh, well, I want a script that does, oh, great, Cal Rodeo or, or somebody else had this code already. I just had to tweak some things. So if you did something that you know took you a while, go ahead and share it, because it really makes a name for you when, when people say, oh my God, he fixed a problem that everybody had. So as a cheap plug, since we're at Zertocon, if anyone's looking to code with Zerto, that guy in the corner over there, Wes Carroll, actually built a wrapper for our APIs using PowerShell. So you can literally, instead of having to learn the APIs, if you know PowerShell now, you can write code in PowerShell instead of the API because of him. Uh, his Twitter handle is Wes Carroll, two R's, two L's, tech. And uh, feel free to reach out. He's, he's more than willing, and I'm volunteering him because we work together. But uh, he's more than willing to answer questions, and he'll be at the conference all week as well. But he did take everything that he did in his spare time and shared it on GitHub. So it's on our Zerto public GitHub account, and you can actually download the wrapper and you know start testing and coding. And I think at some point he's going to put some example scripts up there, right, buddy? <laughs> Love you, man. Yeah, I'm on YouTube, man. Um, and then the, the next session, we're not quite there yet, but it will be published. Just so it gets okay. recorded. Yeah, so I don't have to do that. Um, so we will be there. Oh. 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 I'm just going to yell. <laughs> yeah. So um, through the end, what it will eventually be published on PowerShell Gallery, so you'll be able to install that module, Zerto API wrapper, But if you want um, to help with the backporting, it is on GitHub. <laughs> Go out and yeah. you know, take care of that. But uh, yeah, if you have any questions, I'll be around. I'm more than happy to answer any of them. So e end of cheap plug. Yeah, Sorry. but, but it, it is a very important uh, thing. We're seeing more and more than hackathons are how people are actually learning. So Zerto did a hackathon on Sunday. Right. Uh, VMworld has had the ha hackathon for like three years. Uh, when you really want to learn something, when you go to a conference learn, sometimes the hackathon is the space where you learn. So if you're not already getting into that whole, hey, I need to learn some coding, at least to the point that I can understand what the script is doing, that's a great way to start. And that's also community. By the way, he won the hackathon with uh, Edgar Sanchez, Edgar who's did. in the back. Yeah, yeah. 95 well, yeah, well, yeah, but yeah. you were the business guy. Come on. Yeah. <laughs> All right, so we, we're kind of talking a lot about how to, well, what the things are that you can get involved with, how, how they can help you, and that sort of thing, right? But what does this look like, right? So we're all in IT. I'd say 97% conservative estimate are introverts, right? Let me spell it right. So I, this is pretty uh, terrifying for me. It's kind of hard to believe, but I am not a very public person usually. I'm pretty quiet. My, my nickname growing up was actually Stranger. Um, so to get up here, you know, it took a lot of practice, a lot of work, and you know, things like that. So we all start out kind of just lurking in the corner, being that wallflower. You know, you'll show up to meetings and maybe not talk to anybody and not say anything until you get a little bit more comfortable and, and things like that. And how you can proceed from that point on is really to just, you know, say hello. You know, Ari and I are pretty, pretty open, pretty, you know. We, we got accustomed to it, but, but it's true that the first time you show up, especially if you're intimidated, like if I went to a Kubernetes conference today, I already know that the answer is talk to people, but the first thing I would be like, I don't want to look like a dumb person. Yeah. You know, we're all peers. It, it, it's all in different stages of what you have learned and where, what, what you have experienced. Don't be afraid to just start talking to people, telling them where you come from, and asking them, you know, hey, I saw your session, it was interesting to me, or, you know, I'm, I'm think this is my opinion of that session that we just went to, what do you think? So my, a great conversation starter. My first presentation at VMUG, I, uh, I was concerned that people weren't gonna pay attention, they didn't really care about what I had to say. 
So I put a little thing in my bio that said I was a part-time male model just to see if the room started laughing. And it worked. And I heard, kind of heard, I heard people laughing here and there. He still breaks my chops about it to this day. Yeah. But I put it in there just to see if, if people were engaged. And it kind of put me at ease because I was like, all right, you know what? Maybe they, they do want to hear what I have to say. And that's kind of how we started talking because I, I think you got a kick out of it. And, yeah. you know, now look at us. So, so something you learn as, as you progress, you see the last one is mentor. Uh, something we learn in Be Brown Bag is that as soon as someone says, yeah, I'd like to, yes, you are, you're scheduled yeah, you yeah. Know, next week. <laughs> Yeah. We, we learn to volunteer real, real fast. Yeah. Uh, but that's, honestly, sometimes people just want that. Sometimes people just want someone that will tell them, yeah, go ahead, we believe in you, you can do it. So don't be afraid to actually speak out what your innermost desires are. We can probably help you. Yeah, so speaking of the mentoring, so we're both actually part, and we'll touch on the expert, but we're also part of the V-Expert Pro program, which is basically, we're, we're kind of like recruiters for V-Expert, so we help if somebody comes up to us and says, I'd love to become a V expert, how do I do it? We'll walk you through it and help you along the way and, and kind of show you what some of the qualities are that make a good V expert and can help you along the way. And so we'll help mentor in that sense. But I also try to you know, be a mentor at my job today too. So like Mike Martino actually, he brought me in to be a uh, New York City VMUG leader. I brought him in to be a Zerto SE. So it kind of goes both ways, but I, I try to help him um, you know, grow as an SE, and now he's teaching certification classes and making me look bad and, and things like that, because uh, now he's, he's setting the bar so high that I have to catch up, so thanks a lot. Um, but, but that's the thing, it's sometimes you actually learn more by mentoring, because it points out some of your gaps and it points out some areas where you can improve, and even if you don't think you have that ability in you, your experience is unique. Nobody has gone through the same exact journey or the same exact track that you have, whether it's just IT or your family. Like I said, I've just moved from New York to Charlotte, so Wes lives in Charlotte. I was asking a lot of questions. I have other people that I know that moved, so I was trying to get a feel of what that would look like, and I just really made the leap. I mean, you've done it too, yeah. multiple times, so it's... it's uh, and one of the things that you, you said is really important. Uh, you learn a lot when you mentor someone. It's also true that when you get up and present, you learn more about the topic that you thought you were an expert at. Mm -hmm. Teaching people, like literally two people learn, you and you learn as well. You hear one question that like you don't know the answer to, and I'm the kind of person like, God, I don't know what I have to go like study and look it up and figure it out because I don't want to be the guy who can't answer the question in the next presentation. You know, I want to be able to know how to combat no, whatever. We'll talk about some yeah. attitudes that help in, the, in yeah. those senses. All right. <laughs> so another way you can get, uh, you can get uh, involved. Like I said, the V community is about anything and everything. All of these Twitter hashtags are because somebody said, you know what, I want to organize something. So B beers are literally play, uh, events where people show up and have a beer. I like B Street Fighter. Oh, yep. oh B ladies. Yeah. So so I'll be I'll be I'll, uh, first of all I introduce Mike. Mike Masters is a VMA leader in St. Louis. Sorry about that. I didn't yeah. mean to interrupt. I no, just wanted to. No, no, please. Uh, yeah, and if anyone has questions, please, you know, Listen, we yeah. don't want to be talking at you. Like, we'll talk with you guys. So. Is there, we have, we have a limited number of ladies in our group, you know, but we do have some. Um, Lindy out of Indy is probably the leader of our group. Everybody knows Lindy. Uh, she started a V Ladies. So when VMworld, they have the V Ladies meet up. And Women in Tech is another one. Right, yeah. So, so they do a bunch of stuff like that if you ladies want to join that. I'm sure Lindy would be more than happy yeah. to. As talk as you about that and discuss that. How many ladies do we have in the room? One, Couple two, yep. that's three. Okay. So, so we have, that's four or five. Sorry, I didn't see you're still around. Yeah. <laughs> so it, it really is representative of the whole tech industry and it's a problem. We really need more women in, in tech. So if you ever feel like that you're being muscled out and you're, you're not well understood, that's a great support group in the sense that not only will they help you with, with any time that you would say, you know, I'm getting tired of this industry, but also when there's uh, opportunities, because there's a lot of times that they would prefer to hire a woman. Yep. So it's good to know. Go that. find Rebecca. Um, all of these things are, sorry, I wa just want to highlight yeah, that yeah, a yeah. lot of these are, are people that say, hey, I want to go, I have, uh, I think uh, John White probably knows Be Brisket very yeah, well because yeah. that uh, it came out of Pittsburgh. Um, anytime that people want to get together and just talk tech, make a hashtag. Say, hey, you know, you know we're in Music City, I want to make something out of this. Uh, let's meet up in this bar. You don't even have to pay. You can tell me to pay your own. 
But just having the opportunity as a community to come in and talk to each other uh, over something that we like, like we used to do V Ramen in New York City. I yeah, love those. So those are really good. And there's also some fun ones like the V Fitbit and V Fit. Uh, there's also the Apple Watch, yeah. where people that are like you know 200 pounds, I need to get in shape. They find support within the community. Thanks just God. just joining those gyms. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I'll go back to this. Yeah, no, no. <laughs> sorry. So uh, LinkedIn's another one. It, I, I basically just call it professional Twitter. Really, you know, it's it's a great way to connect in a more professional setting. The one thing I I, I personally feel about LinkedIn is that it's definitely a little bit more salesy than Twitter is. Twitter is definitely more real, honest, you know, answers. I mean, there's a lot of marketing and stuff like that in there also, but just depends on what your flavor is, what your preference is. There's a lot of groups, though, within LinkedIn, and I know my first, when I got my VCP, whenever, um, I actually went through one of the, the study groups and was asking a lot of questions and things like that because, you know, it was anonymous and people didn't have to, didn't have to know who I really was at the time and a muddy fake M name, Mr. whatever. Sexy 22? Hey, man. Male model 17, come on. Male model 17. But, uh, it's another way to just kind of connect with other people, and that's really the, the key here is we're just kind of showing you what the mediums are and how you can connect with others. You know, LinkedIn's great. We all, there's also Slack. I'm sure everybody uses Slack out there. Um, the only thing with Slack is, you know, if you're using it on your computer, it's memory. Make sure you got some RAM. But so <laughs> so <laughs> it's, it's a RAM meter like Chrome. Uh, there's a thing with Slack that when you sign up for Slack, it's in a web page. Uh, you close the web page and you never see it again. I, I really recommend you install it in your in your desktop, especially in your phone. Yep. Uh, it's becoming like the way that if you are very in interested in a particular technology and a topic, like let's say if you're in really into VMware and Virialize Ops, very very niche thing, there's a Slack for that, and there's a Slack for that that has a lot of people that know a lot about code. it. Code. Yep. Yeah. But Created one during the hackathon. Yeah, but but um, but you have to find the right Slack first. So asking people, hey, you know, I'm trying to look about this topic, and you, you know a good Slack for it. Docker, Kubernetes, they have their own Slack. Yeah. So basically, if you just each, go, each community yeah, has you, one. You basically just go to the community page. Most and most Slacks require you to have like an invite, uh, and it's normally not a problem if you know somebody already there mm -hmm. already. But there's one that I use a lot, which is the VMware Code Slack, because you just if you put join VMware Code in in, in Google, you just put your email and enter and it automatically accepts you, and you can do whatever you want in that Slack. So the thing I use a lot is a private channel. Uh, when I, for, for example, when, when we were doing the hackathon, we made a private channel, got everyone in there, and that it was an easy way to collaborate code. Yep. So really useful. Are we done with this? Yeah. Go for it. All right, so, so this is something that we've talked a lot in our community, especially when people come in. The first year, they're like, well, everybody knows so much, and I don't, you know, I'm just starting, and everybody knows everything, and I don't know what to blog post about because. That guy's a VCAP. <laughs> because if I do a blog about this, well, everybody's done it already. So I was actually talking with, uh, with Wes over this. One great barometer to understand if, if what you're trying to post is useful, do a Google search for exactly what you're trying to post about. If you find three blog posts that are exactly what you're gonna do, don't do it. But if you have to you know, go around the results and nothing is exactly what you wanted to do or you don't find it, please do it. Most people are not gonna get to the level of William Lamb and Duncan Epping that everybody reads whatever they post. Yeah. No, we're really Google fodder. You know, if someday one, pe one person wants to have our use case and they find us through Google, we did our job. That's, that's all we can do. I use my blog so I remember stuff. So if, if I keep going running into the same problem over and over again, I blog about it just so I have a point of reference. Yeah. Like, you know. And I, I love to, to know, like um, Eric Sieber down there, I'll actually take the microphone the way there. Uh, uh, he actually runs, you oh. got it? Oh, sorry, thank you. Uh, he actually runs the, the ranking of virtualization blogs and podcasts every year. So I'd love for you to explain a little bit about it so, just so people can hear about it. Sure. So, uh, so I've been a V-expert since the beginning and involved in the community since the very beginning in that. And kind of early on, there wasn't a lot of bloggers. And what I've been doing on my own blog, vSphere Land, is I've been kind of organizing a way to recognize the top blogs in the community. So, so every year I have a, a voting I open up and people can vote on their favorite blogs and rank them in, in their order. And from that, we kind of publish a list of, you know, these are the most popular blogs in the community and that. And it gets a lot of people a lot of recognition that they deserve when they blog. Because a lot of those bloggers sometimes don't get recognized and that, you know, people read the blogs and that. But um, it's a great way for, for people to understand, you know, what all the blogs are out there, kind of um, who can, um, you know, what bloggers are talking about, you know, which, which ones are popular in that. And all that, you know, every year it's about 300 blogs that participate. So there's a lot of new bloggers coming on all the time. You know, sometimes they, they fade away, 
and stuff, but it's very active blogging community doing that. So great way to get yourself recognized. I've seen a ton of people advance their careers from blogging, that they'll start out, um, they'll get recognized, and they'll go on to a new opportunity in that. So it's a great way for you to contribute, to help others, and to help they yourself get recognized and kind of advance your career. Thank you so much. Thank you. So we're all, all, we're all on our own journey, uh, and I love this graph. Actually, I think I know Simon Warley was the guy they, yeah. they said that did it. But there's a no, I know nothing phase, which is the beginner over there, and then you, you think you're getting to know most things, and then you're like, man, man, I'm an expert. I really know this stuff. And that's when you be really become a hazard because you don't know the whole picture. You think you know, but you really don't know a lot. And this is normally when outages happen. And after the outages, yeah. you realize that, oh, you know what? You know nothing, John. I really no. know nothing. You know, I'm, I'm going to take it. I'm going to try to look at it. And that's, that's where you really get to really start building you know, wisdom and not just knowledge. Yeah. But we wanted to highlight failure is temporary. If you try to do something and it doesn't work, shrug it off. That's yeah. good. Go to the next thing. Yep. Uh, if you presented and you were very nervous, next time you'll be better. So the head of SC is Zerto, uh, Denise Hom. She's running around somewhere. Mm -hmm. So we had a presentation, and I don't know if you guys have ever, um, what was the, uh, oh, I'm blanking on the guy's name. Uh, uh, Jocko, Jocko Willenick, right? And his thing is good, you know? Oh, I failed, good, you know? Oh, uh, I wanted to get this job, I didn't get it, good. You know, because now you have the ability to learn from it. You have the ability to point out something that you did not succeed at, and now you're gonna have to work harder to get it the next time, and you have that in you, and everybody has done this, and everyone's, you know, tried to install something at home, or you know, tried to install something at work and failed. You know, we've, we've all caused an outage at some point, because I, I know we all have. But uh, you know, there's always been a situation where you have the ability to get better, and that's really what we're trying to point out here: is just because you fail the first time, you know, everybody has. You know, I've done a lot in my career, been in some pretty nice jobs, and over time, we've had the ability to progress along the way and you know one of the other things we didn't actually talk about the brown bag does a well Ariel does a meet the expert video session where a lot of people that are pretty well known in the community have sat with Ariel and done interviews just kind of what their journey was I, I did one you know I think Mike's done how, one how did you get started in IT is my first question <laughs> exactly and it's always fun because you, you realize that this person who has reached a pinnacle of, te of technical knowledge and, and influence they started like everybody else yeah and you can just kind of hear the stories and uh, you'll see a lot of similarities and things like that along the way. The real, the real thing is just, just don't be a jerk. You know, just be, be good to others because you never know, and like I said, the community is very small and you never know when you're gonna run into somebody again. And I've seen it happen where people have treated me poorly and then they came in for an interview and guess who was behind the desk? So, you know, you, you have that ability to meet people. Hey man, they deserved it. <laughs> So you have that ability to choose to be a nice person or not. So which way are you going to go? And I think at the end of the day, helping others and really trying to share what you have is only going to benefit you in the end. Okay. Anything to no, add? No, I think we, we don't have a lot of time left. Yeah. So. so be frank, be respectful, be positive, um, and you'll find that this is a very welcoming community and you will have a great time. Yeah, just really how to get started. And really the thing is we're going to share all these slides, so feel free to reach out to them. And, as we'll I put said, it with the uh, hashtag. You got that right. Yeah. Um, I'll probably blog about it. So if you, you ever see a Spooky Solutions, that's my, my blog. The, the, the name's a whole other story. But I'll share all these as well. And we can try to uh, help you along the way. But if you see me in the halls, feel free to just you know stop and say hello, and take a selfie or whatever. You know, yeah. you, this guy so, loves so taking selfies. So I just want to highlight the V experts in the room uh, yeah. before we leave. So Mike over there, uh, Alistair, Eric, uh, John White was over here, but I think he left. Edgar Sanchez down there, uh, VM Scribble, but I don't know your name. <laughs> Matt, so a lot of the times my, my problem is I'm really bad with names, so I'll take a selfie with you and tag you so I can find you later. <laughs> he knows Twitter handles, just doesn't know people's names. Yeah, uh, Mike Martino and Wes, who actually didn't renew because he had that imposter syndrome where he thought he wasn't being valid and also he didn't even reapply. So we, we coach him, of, you, know, yeah. you don't, don't do that, so. Yep, and there are sub programs, so just real quick on what the expert is, it's, an award, an award for contrib contributions, right? So it's not, I passed a certification or anything like that. It's just, you know what? This person, we've seen them help out in the community. They've done a lot to really help others along the way. 
let's just give him a, a nice pat on the back and a, a great logo to throw on. Get, get some home lab license. I don't know what you're talking about. Shh. Virtual license club. <laughs> you know, there's different tracks though. So if you want to learn about NSX, there's a group where we're both NSX V experts as well. So if you want to learn about it, you want to get put in the right audience and you want to know, hey, where do I get started with this? Where should I reach out to? Just come find one of us. There's a directory. If you go to vexpert.vmware.com, you can look up vexperts on specific tracks and learn more about the program, learn more about who's already involved with it. And if you guys want to get involved, please, yeah. you know. The, the most important thing we want you to get out of this is if you find that this is appealing, reach out to us. We'll be here all day. Um, yeah. I'll point to you to the other vexperts. We'll help you. It's really a thing of once you decide that, yeah, I want to do this, man, it's really easy. It's, it really starts with that commitment. Anybody learn anything? Helpful? A lot of shaking heads like that. Huh? Any questions that we can help in the in this forum? I was expecting at least one question. No. Well, I, I don't have a question, but I've got a suggestion. Uh, and it's the most important thing in my life, as you know so. Dr. Roman and uh, Camp Beverage Marketing Group, off the top of my head, I don't know the book, it's called Extreme Ownership. Yep, Extreme Ownership, just so that's in the uh, recording. Audiobook. It will change the way that you look at ideas, problems in general, how you interact with people. Okay. Yep. Um, I would just like to say, just one word I like to always say is, is just be engaged. You know, you're, you just get engaged with your community. Um, I get, I reach out to the community when I have problems, like you said. Yeah. You know, yeah, I can call VMware support, I can call that, but I seem to, I get faster response from the community. I can put sure. something on Slack and be like, hey, has anybody ever seen this? And oh yeah, do this, do that. You know, we yeah. do that all the time. Twitter's another great one. And yeah. Twitter and blogs, if you have troubleshooting issues at work and you need to find something, the, the, put the it up there. The first time Duncan Epping replies to one of your tweets when you ask like, hey, I, I got a recent question and Duncan Epping comes back and s answers your question, you're like, yeah, just pay yeah. for itself. Yeah, <laughs> yeah Dun I mean, Duncan. Well, don't know. me and William Lamb had a conversation William, about HomeLab yeah, the other day. William I was like, I mean, even Kyle Ruddy, I mean, he, they all work for VMware. They give you a response. I mean, you can file support ticket with VMware and wait for them to call you back. Yeah. By then, you can There's be like, I already got an answer. No problem. Thanks. You, yeah. you get more value out of those sort of interactions and yeah. possibly a faster response. Well, plus, plus, you said. But you can't, you can't pay for Duncan Epping to look at your right, stuff. Right, right. And, and you know, like you said, the employment opportunity. Yeah. I mean, I've known a couple people that got laid off suddenly. All of a sudden, they're out of a job. Yep. Like, hey, sorry, you know, they go on Twitter, they go on Slack and be like, hey, I just lost my job. Anybody yeah. looking for anybody? Next thing you know, two days later, yeah. they yeah. got a job. 1,800 people that are, you know, leaders in their companies is a good network to, to be associated yeah. with. Yeah. And one thing I want to highlight, you had been a VMA leader for three years. I've been a leader for, for a little over three years, but and this is your VMware first year, for, like for almost engaging. 20 years. I mean, I got my certification back. I've been doing with VMware since version two, so yeah. I mean, it's it's. I was one of those guys that was just very introvert, never got engaged, would just sit down and do stuff. And then one time, VMware actually asked me to come speak on a VROPS thing when VROPS, I'd say about three or four years ago, because I had wrote a custom dashboard for VROPS, and they say, "Hey, do you mind coming and speaking?" And it was at Worldwide Technology, if anybody ever knows that. So I did a speaking engagement on this custom dashboard. First time I'd really ever done that. Very nervous, whatever. Yeah. But then customers would come up afterwards, all these customers come up and say, hey, would you want to share that custom dashboard? We, that's awesome, that's also this what we've been looking for. And it, that kind of led me into the whole getting involved, seeing, yeah. hey, I got piece knowledge that people want to you know, learn from me. So yeah. from there it just kind of built and I kind of just started going to things and then kind of led up to stuff like this where you get asked to come pre help present different topics. Yeah. Yeah. So just want to say, you know, thank you everybody for coming out. I think we got a keynote coming up pretty soon, right? Oh, so uh, thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you.